right, so let's go ahead and take out the Good Guys doll from Trick or Treat Studios out of the box. As you guys can see, he has a hair net on, some plastic around the neck. Arms are tied down, and he's got a waistband over here as well. His, his legs are tied down too, let's go ahead and open all those. Alright, so there's tape and stuff on the back. Let's go ahead and take off the hair net. We're gonna put them aside for now. Here's the box art. In this video, I'm going to be reviewing and comparing the Trick or Treat Studios Good Guys Chucky doll and the handmade one from Garrett Zima. Now, many of you know Garrett Zima is behind both of these dolls, but the Trick or Treat Studios one is mass produced, and today we're going to take a look to see what the differences are between the two and see which is better and if it's worth paying four times as much to get it handmade. Alright, so just looking at these two side by side, I could see some notable differences. For example, uh, the clothing, the red on the handmade one by Garrett Zima, is more vibrant red and matches the buttons much better compared to the ones over here on the Trick or Treat Studios one. Next difference I noticed between the two is the sweater or the shirt it has on. The bars or lines on the shirt are more thicker on the handmade one compared to the mass-produced Trick or Treat Studios one. Also, it's more tight on the Trick or Treat Studios one against the arms compared to the more loose-fitting one on the handmade one. Also on the Trick or Treat Studios one on the sweater, the red part by the wrist is not as wide as the handmade one by Garrett Zima. And also, it's more just like a regular sweater that you pull up Compared to the Garrett Zima handmade one where it has a velcro, you can just open up. As far as the hair goes on the handmade one, it doesn't seem as full or thick as the wig one that it has on the Trick or Treat Studios one. However, the cut on the Trick or Treat Studios one I don't like as much as the handmade one. The handmade one looks much better in my opinion. So another thing to show you guys is on the handmade one, the hair is done much more clean. Compared to the Trick or Treat Studios one where you can see the seam running down the head. Now as far as the bottoms go, you can see it's a little bit more different on the handmade one compared to the Trick or Treat Studios one over here on the right. Now for the bottom of the shoes, I think the handmade one by Garrett Zima it looks more better and detailed compared to the more plasticky look of the Trick or Treat Studios one. Now the feel of the overalls on the handmade one, I think it feels much better than the more rubbery feel it has on the Trick or Treat Studios one. And the stitching over here by the waist, it just doesn't look that nice compared to the more seamless look on the handmade one. I honestly think the extra pay for the labor work and everything Garrett Zima puts on the handmade ones is worth it when it comes to the clothing and most of the detail of the doll itself. Now here's a close-up of the eyes for the handmade one. As you can see it has more of an animatronic look which I had Garrett Zima do for me. But for the trick-or-treat mass-produced one it looks more of a painted on look compared to the animatronic look, even though it's actually eyeballs that are put inside. I'm just going to give you guys a close-up of the heads and the faces. As far as articulation goes, on the handmade one, the joints are a little bit more loose when you're moving them around 
compared to the Trick or Treat Studios one, which is a little bit more firm. And I think you'll have some more posability with the Trick or Treat Studios one. Arms. See, they tend to come down a little bit because they're more loose compared to the Trick or Treat Studios one, which stays up. Also, if you're moving the arm up sideways as well, it tends to come down a little bit. Whereas the Trick or Treat Studios one stays firm and up. Now, another notable difference is Mines has a voice box, which I had Garrett Sima put in compared to the Trick or Treat Studios one, which doesn't. So, Mines, if you press on the chest. It speaks phrases, but the Trick or Treat Studios one doesn't have any voice box. So on the handmade one, the overalls are just like one piece over here on top. So this button's here just for a show to make an impression that it buttons onto the top piece or the strap. But on the Trick or Treat Studios one, it's stitched together as two separate pieces. So here's a more close up in detail of the handmade one. And here's a Trick or Treat Studios one. As you can see the stitch over here, stitching over here, I don't really like that. Now looking at them from the back, you can tell the handmade one on the left is a little bit more thicker and more wide compared to the Trick or Treat Studios one. However, the handmade one is a little bit more heavier and harder to carry compared to the more lighter one that the Trick or Treat Studios one on the right. And the straps over here are held on by Velcro. Same for the Trick or Treat Studios one. So now on the handmade one, take the straps off. It has push buttons on the side for the bottom area to just pop off. And then you could on Velcro the back, which shows you the foam insert or the foam body. As you can see, it has cuts over here for the legs and stuff to be able to move. And as for the Trick or Treat Studios one, it just has these two Velcros. It's more of a fitted on clothing, so you can open the Velcro as well. which reveals the foam body. And the legs have the slits in them, but still attached as one piece, so it's not completely separate, which I like a little bit better. I like the whole foam body on this one better. It gives you more posability and it's more sturdy. Now another difference between the two, the Trick or Treat Studios one over here on the right, the head does twist and turn. Whereas the handmade one doesn't seem to turn, I have to move the body itself. So the body twists, but the head at the neck doesn't really twist, it stays as one piece. So overall they're both great pieces. I personally like the handmade one by Garrett Zima for the extra detail it has and the better looking clothing, better hair, and overall just the whole face and everything I think it looks better. However, the downside is the foam body on the Garrett Zima handmade one I didn't like as much as the Trick or Treat Studios one because the Trick or Treat Studios one, it lets you pose it more better and the joints stay firm, as well as the fact that it's more lighter and easier to carry, so you won't get tired as much, say, if you're taking it to a convention or somewhere with you. So for those of you who really like the doll and want to have one, the $500 price range on the Trick or Treat Studios on the right is much more affordable. But if you actually have the money to spend and can dish out four times the amount that the Trick or Treat Studios cost to get the handmade one, it has the extra detail and stuff you can look forward to and the overall better look. And also you can request the voice box and the animatronic looking eyes or any other minor details here and there. I'm sure I'm sure Garrett Zima will accommodate. Thanks again for watching the video, guys. Hope this answers some questions you guys may have had between the two and which one to go for. You can also check on the other video I did for the handmade Garrett Zima Chucky doll over here on the left on my channel. Or you can click on the i card on the top right of the video. I'll see you guys next time.